Nexus Dashboard is a multi-cloud connectivity platform that can run as a physical or virtual appliance, allowing you to consolidate visibility, automation, and management for Cisco and third-party networks. In this chapter, we will focus on the Nexus Dashboard on-prem virtual appliance option, and we will use VMware as the underlying hypervisor. We will learn how to install Nexus Dashboard by following three simple steps. Number one, download the virtual Nexus Dashboard image from Cisco.com. Number two, deploy a three node VM cluster using VMware vCenter. Number three, run the initial setup configuration to have our Nexus Dashboard cluster ready to be used. This will include the creation of a Kubernetes cluster and multiple services automatically installed. Before we start, and as mentioned in Chapter 1, it is always important to check that the resource prerequisites are met and that the software versions you are running in your network are compatible with Nexus Dashboard. You can do this by using the Nexus Dashboard Capacity Planning Tool, as well as the compatibility matrix, which are available through Cisco.com. Let's now move on to the first step of the cluster implementation process download the virtual Nexus Dashboard image. This is a very simple step. Just go to the Cisco Software Download site and in the search space type Nexus Dashboard. Then just pick the version you would like from the list. If we take a look at 2.11e, for example, we can see that there are two types of OVA images relevant to us. Number one, app node which is used if you are only interested in a non-data intensive services such as orchestrator. Number two, and data nodes, which are used for data intensive services such as insights. Based on your requirements and the output thrown by the Nexus Capacity Planning Tool, you may want to download the app node OVA only or both, the app and data node OVA. For example, if you need to have both Orchestrator and Insights enabled, you will download both OVA images and run three app nodes and three data nodes as shown in the Capacity Planning tool. But if you only want to run Nexus Dashboard to enable Orchestrator, just download the app node OVA image and you should be fine. You can always add worker nodes later if you need to for additional services. In addition, you might also notice there's an .iso file, which is used for the physical Nexus dashboard appliance and to update the software version when needed. I'll go ahead and download the app node OBA and just like that, this will conclude the first step of the implementation process. Very simple, right? Now we go to step two, installation of the cluster. Log in to vCenter and select the option Deploy OBF Template on the ESX node or cluster where you want to deploy your Nexus Dashboard appliance. Select Local File and then click on the .oba file that we just downloaded in the previous step. Then type a name for the VM we will deploy and confirm the server or cluster where you want it to run. Based on the resources indicated in the prerequisite section, we must select a data store with the required capacity. Click Next, and then you will see a couple of network adapters in your Nexus Dashboard VM available for you to adjust data and management. What are these? You might be wondering. Let me explain. Every Nexus Dashboard node has a management network interface, which is used to provide GUI, CLI, or SSH access to the appliance and for other management tasks such as firmware upload, inter-site connectivity, and more. Then, each node also has a data network interface, which is used by services such as Insights to receive software and hardware telemetry from your network devices. With this in mind and going back to vCenter, the data and management interfaces in your Nexus Dashboard VM can belong to the same or different network segments which are represented in VMware as port groups. I will use the same port group for both interfaces this time and I will click Next. Now, I will provide a password, the IP address I want this node to use on its management interface and its gateway so that I can later access it via GUI and SSH. 
At this point, we will not assign an IP address to the data interface. We will do this once we access the GUI. As the final note for this step in this video, I am installing Nexus Dashboard version 2.1 which requires us to indicate one Nexus dashboard node as the leader node of the cluster. Such leader is in charge of triggering the bootstrap process to start the creation of all the Kubernetes services that Nexus dashboard relies on. You should only specify one node as the leader, therefore, we will uncheck this checkbox once we install the other two VMs as you will see next. Finally. Click Finish and wait for the node to be provisioned. We will now repeat the process to create the remaining two nodes of the cluster, disabling the leader option at the end of the template as mentioned before. It is always important to mention that independently of who the leader node is, all three nodes in the cluster will behave as Kubernetes masters once Nexus dashboard services are deployed. Once the three nodes are created, Power them on and we have completed the second step in the deployment process. Let's now move to the third and last step, running the cluster initial setup configuration. Using the browser of your preference, type the management address of the node that we define as the leader of the cluster. Don't forget to use HTTPS. And this will take you to the implementation wizard. Skip the certificate warning and logging using the password you provided in the .oba template settings. Great, let's now provide the requested information. We'll start by indicating the name of the cluster and then the IP for our NTP and DNS servers. Now, we have to provide the data network IP address and settings for the Nexus dashboard leader node. Nexus dashboard supports both IPv4 and IPv6, but only an IPv4 address is mandatory as we provision the data network details. We will do the same configuration for all three nodes of the cluster, providing each of them with a data network IP address as well. Lastly, the confirmation screen is displayed and voila, the rest of the process is automatic. This will take around 40 minutes to finalize. However, you can always see its progress and the installation details if you like. There are many things happening behind the scenes, such as the creation of the Kubernetes cluster, services, containers, and many others. Once the bootstrap process has been completed, the process of bringing the cluster up is shown and we can verify each node's progress as well. Once finished, we are ready to log in to our fully functional Nexus dashboard platform using admin and the password that we define in the template. We are now inside our single pane of glass for multi-cloud network operations and we can start enabling services and adding sites, which is what we will do in the next chapters. If for whatever reason you need SSH access, be aware that only the rescue user with the same password is entitled to access. You typically will not need to access SSH unless you need to perform a YP raise or restore to factory settings amongst others. In summary, the virtual Nexus dashboard installation process is quite simple and highly automated. In a matter of minutes, you should have your multi-cloud networking platform ready to be used. As long as you perform a capacity plan before installing it, you should have no issues for Nexus Dashboard to function correctly. <laughs>